Dear students, welcome to this module on functional foods and nutraceuticals in the management of obesity. As we all know, functional foods are foods that have a potentially positive effect on uh, health based and beyond this health basic nutrition, the proponents of functional foods say, uh, for example, they promote optimal health and also help to reduce the risk of various diseases. Functional foods can be considered to be those whole either fortified enriched or enhanced that provide health benefits beyond the provision of essential nutrients like vitamins and minerals when they are consumed at efficacious levels as part of a varied diet on a regular basis they promote health Functional foods represent one of the most intensively investigated and widely promoted areas in the food and nutrition sciences today. That foods must provide therapeutic benefits is clearly not a new concept at all as Hippocrates has rightly pointed years back let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food was embraced uh, early than 2500 years ago. Hippocrates the father of medicine however this medicine as food philosophy fell into a relative obscurity in the 19th century with the advent of modern drug therapy in the 1900s the important role of diet and disease prevention and health promotion came to the forefront once again when we look into the objectives of this model, the module after you go through, you will be able to understand the importance of functional foods in health, also compile the role of food and diet in obesity management. All foods are functional to some extent because all foods provide taste, aroma, nutritive value and however foods are now being examined intensively for added physiologic benefits which may reduce various chronic diseases and also their risk or otherwise to optimize the health. The functional foods concept was first developed in Japan in the early 1980s when faced with escalating health care costs, the Ministry of Health and Welfare of the country initially a regulatory system to approve certain foods with documented health benefits in hopes of improving the health of the nation and also especially the aging population. And now when we look into the functional aspects of the carbohydrate based foods, the orizanol is the mixture of ferulic acid and esters and is present in both bran of brown rice and also the other varieties. The preference for low dietary fat might be through the reduction of the hypothalamic endoplasmic reticulum stress which is known by the dietary fiber. The dietary fiber plays an essential role in prevention of most of the risk for chronic diseases via various mechanisms. As we all know the glycemic index, the GI of carbohydrates and the content of fiber in foods affects the weight gain too much. Studies have shown that the glycemic index starches lead to weight gain, high visceral adiposity and also may lead to lipogenesis compared to diets based on low GI starches. The fermentation of soluble fiber produces short chain fatty acids by the action of the intestinal bacteria where the butyric acid is one of the short chain fatty acids found and it is metabolically important among others in modulating this important cause of obesity. Butyric acid supplementation reduced body fat by 100% by 10% along with an increase of fat oxidation and also the hepatic energy expenditure. Butyric acid also modulates the substrate trafficking the hepatic tissue by increasing fat oxidation and also the glycogen storage. Macronutrients composition of the diet is also important in inducing the satiety and also thereby reduce the appetite. A moderate increase in protein content along with the reduced high glycemic index foods and moderate food prevents the regain of weight in obese patients. 
now when we look into the next section of how these protein based foods and its components play an essential role in the management of obesity especially we all talk about legumes that are rich in protein and also contain phenolic compounds such as the flavonoids isoflavones phenolic acids and lignans which we all talk about the functional property they play a critical role in metabolism evidences of researches has shown that diets rich in protein induces the satiety and also suppresses the appetite and thereby finally the food intake of the persons proteins in general induces high satiety and thermogenic effects compared to its macronutrient counterparts especially the carbohydrates and fats because of its high energy demand associated with catabolism and protein synthesis supplementation of legumes at four servings per week with a hypocaloric diet a low calorie diet to obese individuals for 8 weeks in an intervention study has shown to reduce body weight cholesterol levels oxidized ldl that is the low density lipoprotein levels and also hence improved the plasma antioxidant levels thereby proving the significant effect of these functional foods incorporating legumes in weight loss programs have offered a satiety and also improved the effects of calorie restriction by its own on the lean body mass and also reduce the basal metabolic rates now when we look into another important component that induces the obesity is the fats so when we talk about these functional foods in relation to fats and its related components the type of fat we consume is more important than the amount in managing certain chronic diseases The conjugated linoleic acids are the isomers of linoleic acids and is found mainly in milk, meat and their products of ruminants. Supplementing diets with CLA have reduced body fat accumulation and also increased the protein content. The short term consumption of a spread made with these linoleic acids induces the expression of lipid metabolizing genes and reduces the inflammatory gene expression compared to other fatty acids so hence proves efficiency in obese management Now when we go into the next category of foods the fruits and vegetables and its role in obesity management the high consumption of fruits and vegetables have always been associated with maintenance of health as they offer protection against various chronic diseases varied bioactive components at different levels may be much more responsible for the offered health protection in all individuals The research is conducted by an 8 week nutritional intervention study shows that obese men and women who received enriched fruits with an energy restricted regimen resulted in low oxidized low density lipoproteins that is LDL and has improved the antioxidant capacity in the individuals The black raspberries contain high anthocyanin levels purified black raspberries but not whole uh, black raspberries reduces body weight gain fasting serum glucose leptin insulin levels and thereby homeostasis assessment of insulin resistance is possible and apart from all these food groups also another important food group substance is the beverages Tea is a widely consumed beverage around the world and especially green tea the unfermented one is rich source of the polyphenolic compounds the functional components the oolong tea is partially oxidized and possesses considerable amounts of polyphenols black tea as we all know is a fermented one and contains mostly the theoflavones and polyphenols black tea polyphenols are reported to inhibit the pancreatic lipase and thereby effects on the lipid metabolism on the other hand when we look into the intake of coffee the caffeine present in tea was also shown to have the thermogenic effects and stimulate fat oxidation thereby we come to a conclusion that caffeine and polyphenols in tea also act additively to the effect of fat oxidation 
A significant increase in 24 hour energy expenditure was reported after consumption of these thermogenic beverages like tea, coffee, which is uh, limited to 250 ml three times per day for three days. Caffeine consumed at 100 milligrams per serving increases the basal metabolic rate by three to four percent and also ends up with energy expenditure in a two hour period more by 16 percentage in both lean and obese individuals. In various other research studies conducted with green tea, it shows that an increase in fat oxidation, reduction in body fat ratio and hence result in waist circumference was also observed. The effect of the coffee folly phenols in modulating the postprandial macronutrient metabolism and whole body substrate oxidation with a lipid carbohydrate mixed emulsion has suppressed the postprandial plasma glucose levels, thereby the insulin levels and becomes glucose dependent insulinotrophic polypeptide and also the triacyl glyceride levels. A novel antioxidant beverage was prepared from coffee silver skin of Arabic and Robusta varieties and was tested for their anti-obesity potential employing the elegance model. It showed that it had a positive effect on reducing the obese levels of the individuals. And also another important food group that comes in obesity management is calcium and its dairy products. Low intake of dairy products and calcium is inversely related to adiposity. Dietary calcium plays an important role in regulation of energy metabolism and also the risk for obesity. Dairy products are the main source of dietary calcium and different mechanisms have been proposed for explaining the role of calcium. The chronic increase in dietary calcium always reduces the intracellular calcium in adipocytes thereby reduces the expression of fatty acid synthesis, enzymes required for lipid synthesis. The potential hypolipidemic mechanisms of calcium may occur at the gastrointestinal tract via inhibition of fat absorption and also increases the fecal fat excretion, inhibition of bile acid absorption. A calcium induced diet can always increase in the conversion of cholesterol into bile acids for excretion. And now, when we look into the role of dietary fiber and prebiotics, which we recently use nowadays, the microbial manipulation is also another potential strategy for obese management that could be achieved by dietary fibers, prebiotics, probiotics or sometimes symbiotics foods supplements. Several research studies have shown that the dietary fiber consumption significantly enhances the weight loss. Dietary fibers are non-digestible and non-starchy polysaccharides and are widely distributed in plant foods and certain microbes. And when we look into details of these substrates, they are pectin, beta-glucan, xylon, arabinoxylon, inulin, resistant starch and guar gum are some of the dietary fibers which are used as supplements. The dietary fiber are also rich in whole grain cereals and their intake significantly lowers the risk of coronary heart diseases, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, obesity and also the gastrointestinal diseases and thereby boosts the immune system and stimulates the growth of beneficial microbes in the colon. The prebiotics on the other hand when we see these are the oligosaccharide derivatives produced by enzymatic hydrolysis of polysaccharides or by transglycosylations. The most widely studied and European approved prebiotics are fructo oligosaccharides and galacto oligosaccharides and also the lactulase. The dietary fibers and prebiotics are resistant to human digestion and are fermented to acetate, propionate, butyrate, short chain fatty acids due to synergetic action of the colonic microflora and these propionate stimulates the expression of leptin and reduces the pro-inflammatory factor resisting in human adipose tissue thus opined that propionate suppresses appetite and combats a major role in prevention of obesity. 
inulin type fructanes which we shortly call as ITF are naturally distributed in the onion, banana, chicory and artichokes and thereby promote gut health, the ameliorate plasma lipid profiles and enhance the mineral absorption in the gut. The ITF enhances satiety, also decreases energy intake and regulates the body weight in human. It is also observed that inulin supplementation in the diet reduces liver and abdominal fat weight gain, whereas cellulose supplementation decreases the feed intake and also abdominal fat when compared to control in the animal studies. In a double blind placebo control study on obese women, these have shown to decrease the fat mass, also the plasma lactate and phosphate dialcholine levels. The fusoidins have been shown to exert various health benefits such as being an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-allergic, anti-tumor, anti-coagulant, anti-viral, anti-hepatopathy, anti-uropathy, anti-renal pathy potentials. The fusoidins are acidic sulfated polymers of L-fucrose along with xylose, galactose and mannose isolated from brown algae which has showed an antipogenic effect in vitro. Now, when we look into the effects of probiotics and symbiotics, the Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organization has defined the probiotics as the live microorganisms which when administered in adequate quantities confer health benefits to the host. The colonized in the gut of humans and certain animals. Probiotics promote gastrointestinal health. They are also recognized for many health promoting effects such as modulation of the host's immune system thereby improving the bioavailability of nutrients and hence decrease the lactose intolerance. Recently there are being recognized for their remarkable role in regulating the host metabolic processes, weight gain and obesity as well. Most widely studied and generally regarded as safe foods GRAS probiotic strains include species from the genera Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria. The numbers of these beneficial microbes can be enhanced by various dietary fibers and intake of foods with prebiotics. More information on the selection criteria, the role and function of probiotics for maintaining the health gut can be much more useful. The ambiguity that is found is existing and is concerned the role of probiotic bacteria, especially the lactobacillus species which is specially found in milk and its dairy products in regulating the obesity as certain lactobacillus are reported to promote growth and body weight in the individuals. A comparative meta-analysis showed that lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus and promoted weight gain, the supplementation of lactoacidophilus species enriched yogurt did not bring any changes in adiposity markers in high fat diet induced obese. However, it is not at all the lactobacilli in the human gut a vast microbial diversity comprising the various other bacterial groups such as belonging to the bifidobacteria species which may also play a role in obesity prevention. The indigenous gut microbes also secrete low molecular weight bioactive metabolites such as short chain fatty acids, peptides, endotoxins, vitamins, enzymes, coenzymes that may influence epigenetic reprogramming and post translational modifications. Thus gut microbes may regulate host metabolism. Based on all these above discussions what we have seen a light of hope arises for probiotic mediated modulation of the gut flora as a potential approach for obesity management and also for other metabolic disease management as well providing the next generation human probiotic species for obesity should contain well studied lactobacilli species the bifidobacteria species and as well the other non-lactic acid bacterial strains that must be inversely associated with weight gain in humans especially. 
their combination with a non digestible carbohydrate source that is for example a dietary fiber or a prebiotic symbiotic may be a better choice as such a symbiotic combination would rather help and render double benefits of both the ingredients that may take a lead in the future management of this major health problem obesity although many functional foods may hold promise for public health there are concerns that the promotion of functional foods and the structure the functional claims may not rest on sufficiently strong scientific evidence although claims about the potential health benefits from these functional foods or the ingredients must be communicated much effectively to the consumers the differences between the health claims must also be more widely addressed to allow consumers to understand the differences in the scientific basis of such claims. times proved much recently and when we look into the conclusion of this module any health benefits attributed to the functional foods should be based on a sound and accurate scientific based researches including rigorous studies of safety and efficacy as well interactions with other dietary components and potentially adverse interactions with pharmaceutical agents must be clearly imparted through these education consumers must also realize is that functional foods are not a magic bullets or a panacea of poor health habits these are not good or bad foods only good and bad dietary patterns thus all people especially the consumers should be wary for many of these promotions or implied benefits of these foods and must realize that there is no consistent regulation or enforcement on such functional foods area only when all these issues are addressed these functional foods can become part of an effective strategy to maximize the health benefits and reduces the disease risk among the population groups thank you